Howdy folks, welcome back to my legacy garage. We're back on the old Aquasport today. I've got a laundry list of stuff to do this thing before it goes out on the water, and that's happening this weekend. So we need to get to work. First on the agenda is this scupper right here. We can't very well have a hole under the water line in the boat. It's a drain from up top here, which I'll show you in a minute, but uh, I got a new one. We're going to pop that baby in there so it doesn't sink. That, that's a plus. I, it's much better that way. Now the downside, of course, is the other end of the scupper is way down in that hole. I mean, it is way down in there. So the first thing we're going to do is get the battery out of there. And then we're going to see if I can even reach down in that far. It's going to be sketchy. The black hole of death. Way down in there is what we are getting after. All the way down there. See that little white thing sticking through all that mess? That's what I need to try and get to. Great. All right, got the scupper in there. Now we just got to figure out how to hook that hose to it, straighten up this wiring mess, put the battery back in it, and this part will be done. That there is what you call a done deal. Now we just got to figure out all this wiring mess in here, put the battery back in her, and move on to the next thing on the list. All right, y'all, we moved in the garage threat of rain, all that fun stuff. We got, uh, we got some wiring problems. Um, this used to be connected and now it's not anymore so the trailer lights don't work and apparently the highway patrol frowns upon that so we need to fix it. So that's what we're gonna do. The first thing we have to do is cut all this old garbage off of here. Then, you'll notice that the wire colors, they don't match up completely. A couple of them are the same. You got green and yellow, but then you got these two. And you gotta figure out which one does what, which we're gonna tackle. So, a uh, quick little bit of research, and I found out that this one right here runs back on the driver's side, and this set right here runs back on the passenger side. This looks to be marker lights, and this looks to be marker lights, which means that these are your stop lamps. So, when we bring out the new pigtail, right away you can say that your white is your ground, which is going to have to go to this bolt right here, because you have to be connected to ground. If you don't have a good ground, none of this is going to work. And then you have these two wires, and this one is your marker lights. So this one has to be tied in with both of these together so that the marker lights work all over the trailer. So I'm going to go ahead and start stripping these off, get the ends stripped off, and then we'll hook everything up and we'll see what we've got. Got these pretty handy strippers here. They work pretty good on newer wire but this stuff is so brittle that it doesn't really want to do much to it. It takes a few tries to get them to work. There we go. We got some pretty decent copper in there which is awesome because this old pigtail that was on here man it was corroded and in bad shape and one little tug and it all popped right off of there. Alright we got everything connected up here. Now we're gonna go ahead and Give her the old heat. There you have it. Nice wiring repair. Let's go ahead and get that ground hooked up and we'll be in business. Let's move on. There's so much to do. Next up on the agenda, wheels, tires, wheel bearings. I haven't looked at this whole mess right here very close. 
When I towed it home, it was about 30 miles home. It makes me nervous to tow it anywhere else because, uh, yeah, they're bad. Uh, I'll get you in here so you can see how cracked up and everything the tires are. Um, they do hold air. I haven't had to add any air, but it makes me nervous to even move this thing. And I got a feeling when I get into the wheel bearings here, I'm going to be even more nervous. Let's get her done. So they don't wiggle or move around, which is good. They spin pretty free. Let's get the grease cap off and see what we can find. I do know this right off the bat, the castle nut is loose. Grease has definitely got water in it. Grease seal looks decent but it's obviously had water in there so it can't be that great I think we need some new bearings that sucks that sucks pretty bad I guess we're gonna have to sort of knock off here I had planned on just repacking the bearings and rolling on but uh, She's in pretty bad shape. And I don't want to just kind of okay do it. I, uh, I don't want to broke down boat trailer on the way to the boat ramp. Nobody likes that. It's going to ruin your fun filled day of fishing real quick. So it looks like we're getting up early tomorrow and going and getting some new bearings. And all four of them are going to get new bearings. And then we'll know it's going to be okay. So we'll see you in the morning. Next morning, I got a whole new hub assembly. I was just going to try and get bearings and kind of rebuild this old, old hub assembly. But when I got to digging in this thing, I found on the bearing races in here, it's scored up really bad. And in the grease, there's all kind of grit, uh, chunks of rust and dirt and everything else. So I decided not to do that. And I instead decided that I was just gonna replace the entire hub assembly. See if I can get you all in here to see how nasty this is. So we're gonna go ahead and get this spindle cleaned up. Get the new hub on there and see what we can do with it. So the new wheel hub comes pre-packed with grease and everything. Uh, it's not exactly cheap, it's about 70 bucks. But, you know, for peace of mind, it's, it's money well spent, honestly. So it doesn't come with a new castle nut. I'm gonna clean this one up. It does come with a new cotter key and everything else, dust cap, everything. The only thing you'll have to reuse is this castle nut. So make sure you clean it up good. Get any kind of debris or anything that's in there out of it because you sure don't want to contaminate your brand new wheel hub. This is pretty typical of my luck. I expected to pull the hub and you know, clean it up a little bit, repack it. Worst case scenario, I thought, you know, I might have to go get new bearings for it. And instead, we end up replacing the whole thing because it's just whoever had it before me didn't take care of it. So, you know, folks, if you just if you just take care of your stuff, it lasts a long time, and it's not that hard. Get out in the garage, do a little work. It'll be fine. Now then, it's time to learn y'all something on tightening these up. Just go till they're snug. You don't have to kill yourself because now the wheel won't turn, right? So then you take a look at where your cotter key goes down through here and you need to back this off a little. It turns relatively free. 
Solder key goes down right through the top there. That's pretty good right there. Make sure you don't have any play back and forth. And then you put your cotter key in it. Now, lots of people have different ways they like to do this part. I prefer to bend them up and around on each side. And then I just kind of tap them into place. Look and make sure your cap's going to fit. And it will. And then pack a little grease in there. You're good to go. I like to use some just basic wheel grease. You got to do this with boat trailers every year just because they live in such a caustic environment, you know, in and out of the water being submerged. It's not like your regular everyday run of the mill kind of trailer. So you need to at least pull this apart and clean it out and repack the bearings once a year. Uh, I know somebody who replaces the bearings every year, regardless of the condition and everything. So there is a trick to getting that on there when they're being stubborn, and it's called a block of wood and a hammer. All right, <clears throat> got the new wheel hub all on, everything's good and tight and snug, dust caps on there good. As you can see, the old tire, it was, it was bad shape, all cracked up and everything, and they're all like that. Like I said before, they hold air, but uh, we're just going to put the new tires on it. Um, I don't mess around with a boat trailer that might fail somewhere, because that's just asking for a real bad day for a day that was supposed to be a fun day, and it's a relatively small investment to ensure that that doesn't happen. So, we've got... Some shiny new wheels and tires. We're going to slap this on here and we'll be good to go. Well, there you have it folks. I'm going to go ahead and knock out the rest of them and then uh, I'll show you what she looks like when she's done. Well, we got this side done. It looks pretty good. A lot better than it used to. This back one, whew, she was, it was not good. And back here, We've got a whole pile of goodies sitting here. And some more up there. We need to wire in some sort of a bilge pump for this thing. Because this scupper that we fixed, yeah, that's below the water line. And I don't trust that. So I want to make sure there's a working bilge pump. And then, of course, these two hubs over here still need to be repaired. I could only snag two of them today, so that's going to have to wait. And we'll hopefully get it done and take the boat out tomorrow. In the meantime, we'll go ahead and get down in that hatch there and get a bilge pump put in the old girl. So we've got that straight. And then I've got a seat to mount up there that matches that one. So we'll take care of that too. So we decided this video was just way too long. We're going to make a part two. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already and give it a thumbs up. And We'll see you next time on My Legacy Garage.